Kilowatt, the world's shortest, smallest extension cord. In today's energy conscious world, electricity is becoming more and more important and more expensive. Like you, I get a monthly electric bill demanding payment for the sum total of all the electric energy consumed by everything in my household during the previous month. I used to wonder, whenever that total was painfully high, which of my habits, the equipment, or tools was, co was costing me the most. I'd look around the house and think about the refrigerator, the light bulbs, the computers, the space heaters, TV sets, and etc. I wonder how much each contributed to the monthly electric bill. I had my suspicions about which items were the most expensive, but by the time that monthly billing was received, it was too late to do anything about it. That energy was already consumed and the money long since committed. Now, I don't need to worry anymore. Thanks to the kilowatt energy monitor, I now know exactly how much each and every little electronic gadget in my house contributes to that monthly electric bill. This little, little device is small, inexpensive, simple to use, and easy to understand. Connecting it to measure the energy consumed by an electrical device really couldn't be simpler. Treat it just like an, an extension cord. Just plug the kilowatt meter into a wall outlet and then plug the device to be measured into the kilowatt's own electrical socket, exactly as if it were an extremely short extension cord. But this is an extension cord with a brain. It measures all of the electricity delivered through its socket, displaying information in any of several modes that can be instantly selected with a set of five convenient push buttons. I really like these controls. There's just nothing complicated. When you first power it up, the device automatically initializes and calibrates itself within about two seconds. Then it begins displaying the power line voltage. In the USA, this will generally stabilize between 110 and 125 volts, indicating normal power conditions of the type everybody should expect from a North American power company. Until you plug something, plug in some device that consumes electrical power here, you can really only measure one other variable, and that's the frequency of the AC power delivered to your house. In the USA, that'll normally be pegged at 60 cycles per second, or 60 hertz. Because many other countries use 50 hertz, most electrical devices are compatible with any frequency between 50 and 60 hertz, but the 60 hertz standard is so well established in North America, there are a few devices like clocks and motors that depend on that frequency for accurate, for accurate performance. You can easily measure the frequency of your AC power by pressing the hertz button right here. But unless you're generating your own power, independent of your power company, you really don't need to worry about this measurement. Now, after you plug in some energy-consuming device, then all five of the kilowatts buttons become useful. They are one of five voltage. This measures line voltage, as already discussed. This is only interesting if it dips substantially when the energy load is heavy. 205 amp. This measures the current being consumed in amperes, accurate down to about a hundredth of an amp. 305 is labeled watt, and it measures the power being consumed in watts, accurate down to about a tenth of a watt. This value is calculated by multiplying the volts times the amps. 405 hertz. This measures frequency, as already discussed, and 505 kilowatt hours. This measures all of the electrical energy that's flowed out of the kilowatts outlet since it was plugged into the wall socket in kilowatt hours, accurate down to about a hundredth of a kilowatt hour. This value is calculated by multiplying volts times amps times hours and then dividing by a thousand to get kilowatt hours, the same unit of energy measurement that you see on your electric bill. I find two of these measurements to be more interesting than the others. They are one of two watts, this button. By watching the watt setting, I can immediately see how much power is being consumed at that very moment. It allows me to investigate the general power consumption pattern of a device very quickly. And two kilowatt hours. For a more accurate estimate of energy consumption, I consult the kilowatt hour setting, KWH, after an hour or more. 
since most electrical devices cycle through high and low power periods, and what I generally want is some kind of an average that I can use to predict impact on my power bills. If I wait an hour and then record the kilowatt hour display, I know exactly how much energy the corresponding device used during that hour. If that hour is typical, I can multiply by 24 to determine the total amount of energy that device will consume if left on all day. And then I can multiply that value by 30 to predict the total amount of energy that device is likely to consume during the next month. Then I can multiply that number by 11 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the price of electricity in my area, to get a good prediction of the cost of leaving that device on throughout my next electrical billing cycle. It's simple. It's painless. I like the design. Three of, the, three of these five buttons can each alternate back and forth to a second display mode when pressed repeatedly. See these labels down here? Frankly, two of these three secondary modes are useless. But the kilowatt hour button secondary mode displays the elapsed time of the current measurement, which, of course, commenced the moment the kilowatt device was plugged into mains power. I do find that information useful, as knowing how much time is represented in the current kilowatt hour display helps me predict how much more, how much more energy will be consumed during larger time intervals. Overall, I love this little device, and it's, it has helped me learn some surprising facts about electrical consumption and the energy use in my own home.